Testing, testing, one, two, test, test, one, two. Mike should be on. Let's get me up on screen. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. All right, let me do a sound check real quick and make sure that I am heard. Sound is good. I want to make sure that my sound was, was working pretty good and it's loud. Uh, I need to mute my live stream and let it play through. All right, now I don't remember if I've ever, um, if I've ever done this before. I wanna say that I have, that I've done and covered hard drives before. And there's a reason that I jumped back on this issue because this is this is something that that probably would never die, especially with DJs in the age of using hard drives and digital media as opposed to CDs or cassettes or or vinyl records, whatever it is that you want to call it. This is something that's not gonna get that's not going to go away. Only the technology is going to evolve more right now. All the media is gone digital, complete digital. There's no, there's no magnetic. It's all digital. No mechanical is all digital. So that's what we're going to cover tonight. And this right here, when I just I just bought this recently. You probably seen this on the uh, on the promo video that I did for this show. This is a external uh, hard drive that I picked up. Goodwill spanking brand new. It's sitting right here next to me. I've been here uh, loading stuff on it. I took like a I took every every flash drive that I had data on and it's probably about maybe wow this is this is three three drives right here and another three drives right here let's see 32 gigs 128 gig, 128 gig. Uh, I think this is 32, 32, 64, and another 32. I filled up at least half of the space on this drive just to see to make sure that it was working. It was it was format. I actually think that it it may not have been ever used. Like I said, it came in the box. Uh, only paid eleven dollars for it, and I've found at least this is like the third one. Uh, second one that I found in the box, and it even has the original Staples receipt. So it came with everything, the package, the instructions, everything in there. Only thing that I think was missing is probably software. But as for the drive itself, it's uh, it still has the plastic on it. So whoever had it, they took good care of it. And, you know, they may have just used it for a backup or whatever. So uh, after I got that drive, I'm like, well, there's some stuff. And of course, technology has changed since um, since maybe I've done the last video on hard drives. And I think when I did the last video on hard drives, it was a lot more 
uh, detail. Now, I'm not going to get as detailed as what I have before. I'm not going to share all the knowledge. I'm not going to explain every little thing. I'm only going to go through and explain the important stuff. So first off, let's get ready to get started because there's a lot of stuff that I have to cover in so much time. So let's start off. Clap it off. Welcome. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you are a subscriber, keep subscribing. Make sure you share the videos. Um, make sure you, you you like them. I'm not really too big on likes, but knowing that uh, people is, that likes the, the, the knowledge and stuff that I share is really important and it helps me to to come out with more content. But anyway, welcome. My name is Kenyon Ellis. I go by The Kid. That's my DJ name, as well as artist, uh, producer, and so forth. That's the name that I go by. Welcome to Atlanta DJ Zone Tech Tuesday Live, which is a Tuesday podcast. DJ tech and everything related that I've been doing for at least maybe two or three years now. Um, make sure, like I said, make sure you like, share and subscribe, bring that notification bell over here somewhere or wherever, wherever it's located on your device. Make sure you ring that bell because I have dozens of videos, dozens that were done, uh, specifically on Facebook that I will be converting over onto, um, onto YouTube. So make sure, make sure that you you stay tuned for other stuff that I have coming. Now, like I said, back again, um, this drive right here, purchasing this drive gave me the idea to talk about hard drives again. And the reason why somebody is always posting something about a hard drive, you know, whether what type of uh, drive they should use, uh, can their computer drive be updated? Uh, what's the mostly what's the best drive to use? And that's what I'm going to go through a lot of that plus a whole lot more. And what I've done um, probably about the past hour or so that I don't usually do often because I like. I like to flow off the top of my head with with the knowledge that I'm sharing. A lot of the stuff is I don't go and do a whole lot of research. The topics that I come up with are usually stuff that I know. I've done uh, videos before where um, where I've uh, I've started and learning the process, so you get to see something that I may not be too knowledgeable about knowledgeable about but I start to work into it to where you start to say oh that's how that works I never knew how it worked either so in that way we're both we're both learning we're all learning so um make sure you tune around for those videos those right there are probably uh, most likely the Serato videos that I did uh, a few weeks ago. There's a four part series. Make sure you go to my channel and check those out. If you're not experienced and don't know a lot about Serato, those are the perfect videos to start with because I covered it from the, the main screen all the way into all the settings and every little detail and the setting that I was able to pick up. So make sure you go and check that video. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Of course, as always, before I have my um, I have my water, my beverage. Last time I had two cups. This time I'm going to try to see if I can make it out with one. All right, let's see. I think I got a comment. Let's see who's tuning in tonight. Finger. Can't move my mouse.
Yep. And we got my man, DJ Eric Prince, live from Harlem, here from Atlantic City. What's going on in Atlantic City? You know, usually you're in Harlem, but right now you're in Atlantic City, so. All right, get a little time later on. I drop in and uh, open up the door for live guests. But I want to go ahead and get this covered because there, there's a lot, a lot of stuff that, uh, that I need to cover. And I'm just going to drop the photos as I see them because I downloaded a lot of stuff. So... Um, let me make some quick changes. <laughs> oh, excuse me. All right. Let's go ahead and get started with the first one. The first one is type of drives. What I want to do first is go into the type of drives that uh, that you have. Um, talk about your different options of the drives that you have and then um, give a little detail about each one just specific stuff that you need to know not not the whole you know the whole layout as for how a drive actually works just only the parts that you need to know that's most important um, like i say or like I've said in the past before, consider yourself Scrooge. I'm the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future, meaning that I'm going to say something that you may already know. I'm going to say something that you may want to know right now. I'm also going to say something that's going to benefit and help you in the future. So. I cover all those bases whenever I'm giving out information because I want people to to understand what it is that the question that they ask me and um, make sure that the, the knowledge that I share is what they need and will help them at the time that they need it, the present. And I also give out any information for uh, stuff that they may have. Uh, that they may have coming to the coming into the future. Okay, just chilling. So um, let's see. What do I have first? All right. Uh, I got some diagrams, and I don't know which one I want to pull up first. I didn't pull up a whole lot. I just pulled up some stuff that um that is uh really beneficial but first uh i guess let's let's start with the with the oldest drive now i can go into the real real old drives like the um paternal p-a-t p-a-t-a drives which is uh i can't remember is that parallel something 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 anyway i can't remember but those are drives that people don't really use anymore so i'm not going to really go into those because even the drives that that was um that has taken over that is about the same as that drive it's just the technology is a lot faster the connections are different but the mechanicals inside are about the same and um and I need to do a share screen. So let me get, because this drive is, this drive is uh, important. And what I'm about to share is important. The reason that I wanna go into this one in depth, because whenever you have a hard drive to crash, you may not know exactly what's going on inside the drive. So what I'm about to share to you right now is gonna be future information. It can be the now, if you have drives that have that has this problem now, but it can also be 
something that will benefit you in the future that will um, that will give you a little bit more insight to prevent anything from happening. Basically, you'll be more careful with your drives because some people are not really careful with their drives. And and these these drives are really delicate. And the drives that I'm specifically talking about, uh, where are my three drives, are these right here. These are these are your basic saddle drives. And let me move in a little bit closer. This one right here is a size of it. This one is 120 gig, an old 120 gig. And this is the connection type right here. So this is a SATA 3, which is basically the third generation. I do have, and a lot of people don't even know that what the SATA 2s look like because they weren't out as long. Now, the difference and well, no, this is a this is a SATA, this is a SATA, this is a SATA 2. And if I'm right, but they also have uh SSDs that are that are SATA 2s as well. If you look right here below SSD, you'll see two two and a half inch SATA 2. So the only thing that's really changed in it is the technology. The technology, well, really just the speed. The speed on this one is a lot slower. The um, the disk controllers, it only does up to about three gigabytes per second, where the SATA 3 is at six gigabytes per second. And even these, I think the 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 basic mechanical SATA uh, drives or SATA 2 and they are they are three gigabytes per second, which is the average for most computers uh, dating back a few years, maybe less than less than five years ago, a little bit more than five years older than five years. So let me get my image up. And this is what I want to share to you right here. Now, this is this is the drive that I, the Toshiba drive that I was holding up. The thing that I want to share about this is basically how this drive works. OK, now this drive has a spindle. It has a platter. Now. Every drive is different especially when it comes to the size. Some drives may have two platters. Some drives, I think you can probably have up to, well, mostly with the drives this size, you're probably gonna have maybe two platters. And those platters would be able to, to accommodate the amount of um, space that you have. They also have a read and write head. And that's where uh, all the data and stuff is basically read, uh, read from the platters and written to the platters. Then you have an actuator arm and then the axis that controls where it falls on the uh, on the platter and the actuator. Then you got you have a motherboard that's on the other side and that does all the processing with a little cache RAM and stuff like that. And everything is sent out to the computer or an external case or whatever. Now, the thing that I want you to understand about this drive, these drives, these drives are very sensitive. If you see right here at the bottom, at the very bottom that, and let me turn this off. Right at the bottom, it says shock resistant up to 55 G. Now, 55 G, that's 55 grams. 
55 grams. And uh, that's with the operating system and up to 350 with a non-operating system. So that is very delicate. And the thing that I want to tell you, when you're using these drives, make sure you are very delicate. Because here's what happened. Here's what can happen. One bump, one drop, anything that can cause this head to either move its position to go either inward toward the center of the spindle or outward can cause a ton of damage. I mean, ton. This can be this can be a one terabyte drive, and the damage that one scratch would do can can just ruin a whole drive, especially if it has an operating system on it. If it has an operating system on it, it can ruin it even more to where it won't be able to boot up. So that's why another thing that I mentioned is, you know, save sp space stuff out onto different drives. If you have the option to where you can put uh, data on one drive and uh, operating system and programs on another, do that. That's what I do with all my computers, especially the one that I'm using right now. It has, uh, it has three drives. It has three drives. One drive is operating system and programs. Then I have a, a mechanical drive, which is SSD, like the one shown. It uh it stores right now. It stores the data from the other drive, and it also has like my downloads and everything else. But I'm gonna create. I'm going to create and add another drive so I can separate that. So having everything separate in the event that it crashes, especially if you have a backup, can help you out a whole, whole lot. Now, let me explain how this drive actually works to where you can understand it. Now, the best way that I can understand that I can explain how this drive works Picture it like this. If you can look at it on and I didn't download a I didn't download an image that shows it from a side view. Now, if you're looking at this from a side view now, right now, you see it like this. This is how you see it. if I take this cover off, you'll see that there's a platter. Well, no, right here. The platter is right here. Because right here, where this white circle is, that's the spindle motor. The spindle motor is right there. And you can probably tell the circle part, the circle of the casing is where the platter is. And then there's uh, the read and write heads that are crossed there. Now, look at it like this. Look at, uh, look at a record player. A record player has one side. Of course, it has two sides, but the needle only plays on the top side. Now, with the hard drive, it's different. The heads are on the top and the bottom. So if this is your platter, if this is your platter like this, and this is your control arm, I'm trying to move to where I'm in. You have a head right here that reached the top and you have a head that reached the bottom. And now this is for each platter that's there. So if you have three platters, you have uh, you have a total of six read and write heads. You have you have six read and write heads and three platters. So this is your first platter read and write head. Then you got a second one platter read and write head on the on the bottom and these heads do both and then you have your third one some some drives can have up to four can have up to four platters um that i've seen i mean some may have more but usually about two is the average um uh, i can't remember what i haven't taken 
apart one of these yet, but I do have uh, I do have a larger one, a three and a half inch that I've taken apart. And I think it had two, two or three platters in it. So now the the reason that the and well, the technology is still fast. It's still fast for what it does. But with newer technology like the, the, the SSDs that don't have no moving parts in it, this is like really outdated as for the speed. Now, what it does, say for instance, if you save a file, whenever you save a file, it writes to that platter. And when it writes to that platter, it's not specifically um, looking for a spot. It's not saved in a specific point. It's saved whenever you save that data. Wherever the heads are at that point, if there's a blank space, that's where it writes it. So your, your write time can be faster than your read time. Because in order for it to read that file again, it has to find it. It has to find that section or that sector to where it's, it's saved. And the thing is, all heads are writing at one time. And the way that it writes, it writes with magnetic pulses. It sends a, a, a electrical charge that creates a magnetic pulse. The platters are actually magnetic platters and it writes it in ones and zeros. Now, that, that part right there, I'm not going to get in depth into because the technology as for how data is written and created is a whole lot that you probably don't want to hear tonight. So just look at it's digital. Digital is ones and zeros ons and offs. That's what digital is. So at this point is is writing is either sending a one or a zero and it's sending it to that place. It may move further in and out toward the center away, but it never writes in the exact it never writes in a sequential spot. It never stays in the spot and then writes and then further moves out to write more fluctuates. So that's why sometimes it may take a while for data to uh, be accessed with these type of drives compared to the SSD drives and the other newer technology drives that don't move, have moving parts. So this is the part that, that I want to explain on it. Like I say, you have a platter. Each platter has a head. So the read and write heads that you see on the image there's another one below it. And then on the other platter, there's one on it. And then there's another one below it. So if you have two platters, you got four heads. And usually the uh, it, it handles the data. Now, with these type of drives that you don't need to do with the older, with the with you don't need to do with the newer drives, you don't need to do a process that's called defragging. Now, with these drives, whenever you do that process that's that's called defragging, it takes it takes all your scattered data and moves it and shifts it to one one spot or it moves it all together. So in that way, it can access a whole lot quicker. So if you're using. A, um, a mechanical drive, mechanical hard drive, you may want to defrag it often. I would probably say, depending on how much you're using it, if you're, especially if you're, if you're adding more stuff to it, and I need to do mines, I'm going to do mines tonight before I go to bed. Um, you want to defrag it. You want to send. You want to. Uh, you want that data to. It's basically like um, the, the the way that I can explain it is you have a storage house, you have a storage or a warehouse. Now you bring stuff into the into the warehouse, but you don't organize. You don't 
you you just bring it in and you sit you got something that's sitting over here you got something sitting over there you got something sitting you got stuff that's everywhere nothing is organized then you take a day off and you do spring cleaning to where you have stuff organized you put stuff on shelves you have uh you have stuff that's organized in this section of the room you have stuff organized in this section of the room and you also have more space or walk space or space to add more stuff that's the example that i want to explain or that i'm trying to explain with defragging when you're just writing stuff to it and you're accessing it the the heads are bouncing all over everywhere so uh, what you need to do is do a defrag now that only applies to these hard drives you don't have to do a defrag if you have a ssd drive and that's any type of ssd drive if this if it has no moving parts you don't need to do it and in most cases it won't let you do it because you can't do it it's it's a part of the uh operating system if it if it detects that type of drive it won't it won't do it it's only for the mechanical drive so so once again be real delicate with these drives because one drop and if those hit and the heads are floating they are like really like micro millimeters from making contact so um you want to make sure that you don't drop it because just like a needle or anything with a record if you make have something to make contact and it creates a scratch in it that scratch is there permanently and just one little scratch can cause gigabytes of data to be lost because you may have stuff that's written all over and usually when you have a damaged hard drive it's better to recover the data and get another drive or if you have a backup stop using that drive and use the backup but in most cases don't use the backup just go and get another drive take your backup clone it to the replacement drive and then keep it moving you always want to have multiple drives never 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 try to leave yourself available with one drive never try to leave yourself available with one drive if you have your primary drive and you have your backup drive and your primary drive dies out so then you go to your backup drive then you need to get a backup to back up that backup and even a backup to back up that backup because you never know when something uh, ha will happen and you want to be prepared for it. So in most cases, with the example that I tell people, uh, if you do an event, take two drives with you, especially if you're using an external drive. Um, take your primary drive and then take a backup drive. You may want to have the primary drive that you're using, your backup drive that you have on you, is either in your gear bag or in your glove box in your car and also have a backup at home well yep of course the backup at home is not going to do anything for you at that particular event but if you make it through the event okay where you're uh say if you don't if you don't have uh on-site backup then uh, you may have to shuffle and try to you play music from your phone or, you know, if you have some music on your internal hard drive to do that, then that will cover you for you will be covered for that event. That event is over and you have your backup at home, which you go out, purchase another drive or you take another drive that you have and you clone that and keep that backup at home. Don't take that back up at home outside. Keep it so that it's safe and that in the event that any of your primaries or secondaries fail, then you got to back up for that. So uh, uh, once again, real quick, these drives are very sensitive. They're very sensitive. They have read and write heads. 
if those read and write heads, they float like right above, they don't make contact. They use magnetic pulses to create ones and zeros. In the event you bump it and shake it, and that head makes contact, and that platter is spinning, it's going it's going to create a scratch. And in most cases, when you do have a drop, drop or a bump or whatever, the read and write head, the actuator arms, will lock out of position. And some of the sounds that you will hear, you will hear like a click, 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 click. click. That means that the arms are trying to move in position, in the position of where they are, and it's basically stuck. It's basically trying to trying to move either out or in. So it's going click, 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 or click, 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 click. So in in that case, and that's usually when I can tell what the damage is when I can plug the hard drive up and I can put it up to my ear and I can listen to it, the sounds will tell you exactly what's going on with it to where, um, you know, and another thing, never take a hard drive apart. Once, once, it's, once the damage is done, you need to forget about trying to repair it. Uh, leave it up to a specialist, a data recovery, uh, you can take it to some data recoveries and what they do, they may have that exact same drive. And if it's a motherboard, something with the main board that's going out, they'll swap it out. If it's something with the platters, I'm not for sure what they do. I think they they uh, may take the electronics from the other part and hook it up to where it can it can flow free. Now, the thing is, when you take one of these apart, because these are not like records, that records can, and CDs, that they can stand some dust. These, no dust, period. You can open one up, get the slightest bit of dust on it. Then you back to square one as for where you was with the scratch. One little speck of dust can cause gigabytes of damage because, like I say, those heads read, but they never read in the same place. So if it's something in position in that position. And the heads can't read it, then that data is lost and that data could be tied in to other data. It may be uh, it may be a, a video file and not only do you have a glitch but it makes that file inoperable to be played so that file is lost and then it can be also files from um from other folders or crates or whatever so make sure that um with mechanical hard drives that you are very safe and i have lost data before too um I had uh, the, the last time I had an incident was, um, let's see, I had a drive. I was getting, I mean, I was just getting ready to back it up. I had it on the desk beside me and I accidentally bumped it, knocked it off the desk. Now, the thing is, it was it was probably less than two feet, less than two feet. There was a rug. Carpet. And then carpet pad padding, and then the concrete slab. So there should have been enough cushion to where it wasn't damaged. But when I picked it up, plugged it in, all I heard was click, 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 click. So that data was lost. I think I lost maybe seventy thousand files, music files, or whatever on that one. So losing stuff, this right here for a DJ, this is the most important thing. The most important thing to have. You lose this, you can lose a whole lot. If you got a computer, you can still continue DJing. But if you lose this, you have to start all over from scratch as for building everything up, especially if you have like, I mean, like terabytes of stuff, like uh, 100, 200,000, 300,000 files. 
you lose that, 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 that really hurts. That's almost like a death in the family because that really hurts because it takes a long time to recover, especially if you don't have backups. So that right there, that is my, my tip on my fact on paternal drives, SSD. Well, no, this is not SSD, SATA, SATA 2, SATA 3, or whichever, I think this is a SATA 3. So make sure um, you're safe with those drives. Now, the next drive I'm gonna get into, and uh, did I have that one? Uh, yep. is a uh, SSD drive. These are drives that a lot of you may be common with, and this one is a slower one. Let me find one that's a little bit faster. This one right here is a SATA 3. And let me make sure. SATA 3 OCZ 240 gig drive. Now the thing with this, this is all digital. This is this is the the exact same thing as for a flash drive. The same about the same technology except you have a lot more space and it can run a lot faster than a flash drive. So consider this like a large flash drive that can run faster than a flash drive. And because you have more data that can transfer out with the pins. And I think it's like 12 or 15 pins. No, nope, not 12, 15. That is, that is power. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven pins, where as for a uh, flash drive only has two or well, yeah, two, because um, you have a positive and a negative, and then you have your power for the flash drive. But with an SSD drive, these pins right here, and let me get off. Stop the share screen. And um, these pins right here on this side, this is the power. The ones on this side, the smaller ones, those are the data. So you have a lot more data transfer, especially backwards and forwards that can go with the SATA drive. And like I said, it's like a it's like a um, it's like a flash drive. That's what it's like a flash drive. It is a lot faster than the um, the mechanical drives. And I do have a chart comparing that if it will open up to give you some detail about that. So it is not Chrome. All right, so here's the difference. And this is the difference between the two. Of course. The one that you see on the left hand side as for a breakdown, that is the SSD drive. And then on the right hand side is the drive that I've mentioned in the beginning. And that's the um, that's the mechanical drive. Now, with this and it, here, here are the differences and they can be cons and pros. Now, with the SSD, yep, it's going to be faster. It's newer technology. There's no moving parts, there's no heads or whatever. So besides being faster and um, faster, no vibration or noise, because there's no moving parts and more energy efficient, which means it uses less energy than the previous model. Um, another thing there too is that it can survive an impact more than a regular hard drive. So I can drop the SSD drive and as long as the, the actual board inside or the chips or there's no physical damage on the inside is still going to work. 
But you, like I said, you want to be careful with that, too. You, just because I say that it's not prone to more damage than the others, it can still happen. So make sure you also delicate with that, too. Now, the the uh, the cons or the. Yeah, the cons with the SSD compared to the standard hard drive. Standard standard hard drive, the mechanical drives are cheaper per gigabyte, which means you can get a lot more space for a lot less money. So you can get, I think right now, a one terabyte is about maybe probably $20. But if you want a terabyte for SSD, you're going to spend probably about close to $100, maybe $80, $100, or maybe more. And of course, as technology, new technology coming out, the price has started to drop because the price on SSDs has dropped dramatically within the past couple of years since the technology has been out and a lot of stuff have been migrated over to that particular drive. They're phasing out a lot of uh, laptop and desktop companies are phasing out the traditional hard drives. The reason that they keep them is because space. You can get a lot of storage space for less money. And that's the other thing that they're cheaper too. And uh, the other con that SSD is a con for SSD, but is a pro for hard drives is that it's available in larger versions. Now that larger version can be can be the storage size that you know you can get you can get a uh, basic and this is just this is not just the uh, the two and a half inch or the one that you see there. That one you can get that in up to I think four terabytes is the highest that you can get. But a regular 3.5, I think you can get those in like 12, 12 terabytes. So you can get a lot more space. And also SSD is only made in 2.5. They never did make an SSD in a 3.5. Everything is is all 2.5. So that's some some cons and pros and information that you need to know. There there are some other stuff. Um, like for one, SSDs are very very light. Like I said, because you have less parts in them. The the difference between the two, which I can feel by uh, holding up is a real, real good, real big difference. So uh, like I said, that's that's one thing that um, you want to take into account that when you're putting an SSD in, it's going to be lighter and no noise. The only noise that you're going to hear any mechanical is going to be from the CPU or GPU fan. If you have a hard drive that has that in there. Now there is, and going from SSD, and there's really nothing different that you need to do it for, with SSD. They're basically interchangeable. Uh, where there's no there's no special configuration. There's no drivers or nothing need, needed. It's basically plug and play. If you have a mechanical hard drive. So you just basically unplug it, plug in a new drive, and then you're ready to go. Of course, you may have to uh, clone this drive, the mechanical drive, to your SSD drive. So when you plug it in, your computer will operate as normal. Now, there is another drive, and this is the newest technology that's out right now. It's called uh, NVMe or M.2. And that NVMe is non-volatile, let me see, non-volatile memory. And I thought the E meant something, but I think that's, I think that's about it. So 
basically it looks more like a flash drive or it looks more like a, a ram chip because that's what it is is actually is actually like a chip oh wait a minute let me back up there's another drive and the way that i'm going in it i'm going in it from generation to generation i started with the uh, i started with the paternal and actually i should have put this in um before i did the ssd but there is a drive that goes from that goes in between your your standard mechanical drive and your um your ssd drive now imagine if you can combine the two together you can have a drive that has more space than a standard SSD drive, but also be able to run faster than a mechanical drive. And that's what you have when you have a drive like this. And this right here, this is a C Seagate Barracuda. No, excuse me. Seagate Fire Cooler, two and a half inch, two terabyte hard drive. Now, what this does, this combines the technology of an SSD, but it uses the mechanical system as well of a standard uh, mechanical drive. And let me open this video or this photo up so you can so you can see this. So with this drive right here, this is the marriage between a SSD drive and a HD drive. Now, the benefit with this is you, you can get a lot more storage for less money than a SSD drive. But you have the mechanical of the drive that uh, you don't get rid of. Uh, you basically don't get rid of it just you have it to merge together and it's called SSHD or what most people call it a hybrid because it's a hybrid of the two. It's a, it's a merge of the two. And like I said, you have the standard uh, mechanical stuff of the, the basic hard drive, but you are also incorporating SSD technology, which means that you can, you can, um, Data would be able to transfer faster. Your 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 um, your your uh, start times, your reboot times are going to be a lot faster than a standard mechanical drive. Of course, yes, it reads and writes in specific heads, but it also sends the message that there is. Um, there's a lot more that it can do. So that's that's one that I want to mention, too, because, um, like I said, you can get a lot more. You can get the, the it's like having an SSD and an HD with a lot more data. And with this one, I can get a lot more um, on it than I could with the. With the SSD. So if you're if you're in in the um, in the mood where you want to update your drive, but you don't want to spend the high cost of an SSD to get it where you are, especially if you're doing like a four four gigabyte, which they do have a uh, four gigabytes for. Oh, excuse me. They have um, the four gigabytes. Nope, not excuse me. Uh, no, 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 excuse me. No, not four gigabytes. They have two terabytes. Two terabytes for uh, the fire coolers. I think the 
the three and a half inch, which is the standard desktop version, maybe a little bit higher. But right now with the two and a half, you can get a two, uh, you can get a two terabyte, which with a mechanical drive, you can get up to four terabytes. But you can't get that with the SSD or you can get it with SSD. You just going to end up spending a lot more money. So that was one thing that I wanted to cover was um, that particular drive, because that drive will. That drive right there can save you some money. It will put you in the median of the two until the price drops down on the hard drives. All right. Now, again, let me move back. Um, OK, I went and did the paternal or the, the mechanical drive. Uh, I did the SSD when I should have waited on the SSD. But uh, let's put it in order. Patern uh, the mechanical drive, the hybrid and the SSD. Now, there's one more new drive. And of course, there's drives that I'm forgetting because those drives are not important, like uh, SCSI and uh, RAID drives. We don't need RAID drives. So uh, that's that's something I'm not going to cover, RAIDs and, and SCSI. So the next drive that I'm looking, and let me see, I did get a lot of pictures of those, is... Uh, where is it? It's called either the M.2 or it's called um, NVME. And that, that is the name that will be given for it to use, that people use. So um, a lot of this technology is used in, in newer laptops and newer computers like uh apple started using the technology back in 2012 when they did the first retina and there's several different models i mean there's different types and there's lots of there's lots of um lots of information about these drives so you just need to know which one that you need and it is the one on the end that actually you would probably think that that is a rom chip but it's not it's actually a hard drive and it's probably a low one so make sure that you you stay up to that all right, let's see, got a comment real quick. What's up, C-Dog, what's going on? What's going on, Carlton? All right, shout out to everybody that's out there watching. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching this on the replay, thank you for tuning in too. Also, make sure you like, share, subscribe. All right, so like I said about the, the M.2 or the NVMe. Now they come in different lengths and I just started recently, probably um, last year or maybe two years ago, I've rebuilt or had computers built. Uh, my kids, my two oldest boys, Cameron and Kenya Jr., they built custom uh, gaming PCs. And that was that was their primary drive. They use the NVMe chip or the M.2 chips. And I noticed uh, a ton of difference with how their their uh, computer boot up and how it runs compared to how my computers run that have SSDs. in them. So there's a noticeable difference um, with most with most motherboards you only have two drives two spaces so when it's uh when it's a uh, um uh i forgot what i was where i was going with that when 
Where was I going? Let me take a sip real quick. Maybe that'll refresh my memory. So, uh, I forgot where I was going with that. But anyway, oh, when they did that computers, like I said, it was a night and day difference between my MacBooks and even my desktop. So, Daddy had to go and build him a computer. So, now I have the, the fastest computer, which I also now have the M.2 chip or the NVMe, which I don't have one to display because I only have that one. I do plan on getting another one to use as actual storage because it takes up hardly no space. It mounts directly to the motherboard. So there's no cable or nothing that you have to, to, um, to hook up in order to run to it. So that will be a lot uh, and beneficial. So let's see. I think I had some some images for that. Uh, let's see. So out of those, the best one. Okay, where did this open up? The, this is the this is the fastest to use. Now, like I said, a lot of uh, the newer MacBooks, everything from after mid 2012 on up, uses this technology. And here's the thing: Apple has a proprietary. Uh, the first couple of years that they did it, it was proprietary to where there's slots and. That's, uh, let me go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to show the different the different types. see what the comments I got a comment uh, yeah SCSI is not something anybody uses right now it's used with raids and servers I do have a lot of SCSI drives especially different different type of connectors and stuff I also have a a, a server too like a big huge surface is in the, it's in the room uh, right behind me that I was trying to I was trying to set up but uh, I was trying to set up but I never could get it set up I guess because I don't have the right operating system but anyway I'm trying to pull this one and like I said I downloaded a couple images so you guys can follow along and I think I'm looking in the wrong place. Oh, I do have it. I just. Pfft. I opened it too many times. All right, let's see. All right, here we go. Have it. Let me go ahead and share it. And like I said, it's different types. I'm not for sure which one the Apple that Apple uses, but Apple um, has their their own that's proprietary. And let me remove this banner so you can see. And this right here, this was this is a um, a, a SATA 
a SATA or SS, a SATA two, a SATA three adapter to NVMe. And now right here in the green, the green chips, these are all different lengths and sizes. Of course, they may be different uh, capacity sizes too, but they're in different lengths from uh, a short one that's 30, 30 centimeters or millimeter, 30 centimeters and um, all the way up to 110, which is a lot longer. But unfortunately, this one is probably too long for this for this particular uh, adapter. Okay, just answer the question. Okay, that must be something else. But like I said, these are different different types. And like I said, if you look, the slots are different. And that's what Apple, that's what Apple did with theirs. They made this slot to where it was proprietary. Um, in the beginning, you, if you wanted to upgrade the RAM, you had to go through Apple. You had to order it through Apple because it will only they only sold the RAM or excuse me. They only sold the storage for um, for their devices. But uh, after a few years later, companies came out with aftermarket adapters to where you could plug the aftermarket adapter into there and in, onto the motherboard and you can use any type of um storage that you want to use and um that is that you have the 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 one with the m key which has a small slot which is probably about five pins and then you got the rest of the pins then you got the b key which it has three separate with two being divided with two dividers and then you got the M SATA which is the small one but the the smallest of the pins has a lot more than the others and they there may be more too that's uh that's pertaining to this you just need to make sure that you choose the one that you're using all right, so once again, you got those three drives, and let me see, and there we go. These are the drives that you have. You have your original hard drive, you have your SATA SSD, and also don't forget your hybrid, and also your NVMe, which is the chip. So you're going from slowest to fastest, which the NVMe, if you can get that at an external drive that's what you want to use and that i will cover closer to the end of the section where um where i'll be talking about building your own custom that i'll be getting into that so let's go ahead and wrap this section up on the type of hard drive that's that covered at least uh, I think four or five that covers four of the drives that you would probably really ever use a need. So that covers and let me bring my cell phone screen. OK, so we covered the. We covered the mechanical drive, which is your drive that you want to be really, really delicate with and not drop, bump, or anything. And I can really cause damage just by the way that I'm shaking it. Because shaking it violent, violently will also move the heads or make it come in contact with the platters and that's what you don't want to do you don't want the heads to become in contact with the platters 
And then you also, let's go ahead and jump in order. You also have your hybrid, which the hybrid is just like the one that I just put down, but it has extra chips in it to where it reads like a, a SSD or a large maternal card. So think about this one because this one, you can get the best of both worlds for a lot less. And then you have your SSD, which is mostly the, this is what's common now. Um, I don't think they're going to be phasing this one out too soon with the NVMe, but they may. I mean, new laptops and newer computers may come with them. So, yeah. SSD. And then the one that I don't have on hand is the NVMe. And that is a lot faster. It's, it's uh, if I remember right, it's uh, four times four times as fast as regular SSD and it can uh, it is four times yep yep that's that's that all right, let's see what the comments are before I move on. Uh, is it easier to buy a new MacBook or upgrade the memory or use the external? That is a very good question. Question that I get a, a lot and I can answer it. And I'll go ahead and answer your question before I move on. Uh, it depends on the MacBook. Now, Eric just picked up a MacBook. He has the MacBook, the MacBook to have. And to me, that is the 2012. And you may think, what the hell? Why do you want a MacBook that's almost 10 years old? The That particular model or that particular one that he has it has a a lot of options for upgrading i think it uh it was it's an i5 right eric i think it's an i5 it's either i5 or i7 which is i5 is okay uh he can upgrade the ram to 16 gigs which now that's standard for for most laptops only when you get into gaming or customizing that you're moving higher than 16 gigs. But you can upgrade it to, you can upgrade the RAM to 16 for probably under $80. And um, the other thing is the storage. Now the storage on it is not the NVMe. The storage on it Either you you you're using you're using one of these three, the hybrid right here, or you could put an SSD, or you could use a regular maternal or mechanical. Now that particular model has an optical drive or D DVD drive in it. You can take that drive out and replace it and run two hard drives, which makes it best. Now, I got three. I got three MacBook Pros out of the three. Two of them has two hard drives in it. And what you can do with that, if you're running a regular mechanical, you can you can have eight terabytes. That's the that's probably the max right now eight terabytes of storage inside. So you could put four, you could put two, four terabytes inside. You can run one as the main with your programs and you can run another one for storage, music, videos, or whatever. You got up to eight terabytes. Or, or you could do like what I do. I run a combination of two different ones. 
I would run um, I run a SSD like this one right here. I run that one as my main. Yep, yours. Yep, it's I5. Now I run a SSD as the main because you want that. You want your program and your operating system to be the fastest. So I run this as my main, and I have a hybrid that I run to do my data, which means it's still as fast. This is as fast as this. So instead of going back to this, I've still upgraded, but I got a lot of space. And this is a two terabyte. In order for me to get a two terabyte, this is going to be, I think about around $200. You, you, it, it roughly about around $100 per, per terabyte. So Ken don't have that type of money. So. I mean, it would be nice because it would be quiet because there's no moving parts in it. The hybrid does have moving parts because it has the mechanical parts of a regular uh, hard drive. So it, it all depends on it all depends on the, the one that you got. All right. Let's see. Need to get with you on the upgrade. I think I just purchased the kit to upgrade. Now, as for uh, the only thing you need to do is just clone, clone the original hard drive to the SSD. That's if that's if you you want to keep the same operating system. So clone, clone the operating system. Do a time machine backup. Time machine backup. Uh, then put the new drive in and then keep that drive. I keep all my original drives. I still got my original Mac drives that are stored in a case. The case that whatever uh, drive that I put in it, mostly the SSD drive. I use the SSD cases that I keep my original hard drives, which are like 500 and so forth. So, uh, yeah, that's. That's it. There's several different ways that you could do it. And like I said, with the one that he has and the three that I have, those are like the 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 best for user upgrades. Once you start getting into 2013 and moving up, you can only upgrade so much stuff with the 2000, the late 2012 and the 13, the first generation retinas, you can. um you can only update the storage. And like I said, the storage was proprietary as the NVMe. So you had to get it through Apple, which means if you got it through Apple, you had to let Apple do the work. Apple will will uh, charge in order to install it. I don't think they can actually just, you know, sell it or show it to you. So um, that's that. All right, let's move on. Move out of types of hard drives and go into internal versus external. Now, like I mentioned a while, just a while ago, internal and external. And right now, I basically covered the raw drives. You know what the raw drives are. You know that there's there's the mechanical drive, which was the the oldest of the drives. You and then you have your uh, your your hybrid or your SSHD, which you may hear me say, and that's a combination of your mechanical and your SSS your SSD, and then you have your SSD, which is the standard right now. And then you have the newest that that is being implemented into new laptops and computers now. That's like extremely fast. So uh, right now, 
internal versus external. Now, here's my thing on internal versus external as for DJing. I always like to use internal because your internals are going to run a lot faster. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say, for instance, um, this is probably going to be the slowest external that I have right here. Now, the transfer rate for this drive, and this is a three terabyte, three terabyte um, backup drive. The thing is, the transfer rate is going to be up to 480 megabits per second. Now, if you have an internal drive, your internal drive is inside connected of course there's going to be cables or whatever connected to it and it also depends on which drive that you're using but whichever one you're using it's going to transfer faster than that and the thing is that um and this is an external this one right here has a combination it has firewire and uh usb uh, USB B, USB Mini B, I think that's what it's called. And Firewire, I think this is Firewire 800. I'm trying to remember. This is either Firewire 800 or Firewire, 4. yeah, this is Firewire 800, which can be used directly with a Mac. And the cable, here's the cable for it. And it, like I said, 800. This is the symbol for Firewire. And the, it looks more like that. You'll see this on your MacBook Pro. It'll be the port right between your Ethernet, which is for your direct connection to your um your R is RJ45 jack that'll be used for your wired network and right next to your uh mini mini display port which is used for uh external video source this drive right here actually is faster than this drive like i said this tr this transfer at 40 eight megabits per second and that's over two wires there's a combination of four and if you look at it like i'm holding my finger you have negative power positive power and then with the two with the two that you have you have a positive and a negative for your data transfer and it travels in one direction it doesn't travel this way it doesn't travel this way and this way at the same time it travels this way first then back this way of course the rate is so fast that you won't be able to to notice it unless you got something that's faster to compare it to now with this one with the with the with the, um with the firewire it's tra it travels at almost double the speed. Like I said, the black one was 480. This one, Firewire, it travels at 800. But it also has a USB 3.0, which USB 3.0 is about three gigabytes per second. And there's also, it's a, of course, um, and I'm trying to, I don't have, Okay, I'm gonna use a flash drive. Flash drives have, but you might not be able to see any of them that you have. And sometimes you can have fake. You have to look closely at them to look. But the if your flash drive has blue, has a blue connector inside of it, it's most likely USB 3.0, which means it's gonna be a lot faster than if it's black or if it's white. If it's black, it's USB 2.0. If it's white, 
is USB 1.0, which is real old technology. But everything is backwards compatible, so you can still use it. But um, as I was saying, as for the external versus internal, I like to go with me personally. I like to go with the internal. Now, there are cons and pros to both sides. Now, as for the the con, turn that off for a second. The con with or the pro with internal is the data transfer faster. The the pro wait no that's the that's the pro. The con is if it if it's damaged if it's the primary drive then you're out of luck. If it's a secondary drive, uh, depending on how you have it set, you can be still out of luck. So, uh, so the thing is that that you want to be careful with that. And what I do, I clone or I time machine backup both drives inside. I I clone or time machine backup the 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 one the ssd with the operating system and the program and our time machine the other one with the data on it with the music or whatever it is that i have on there so it's easier to back up but the thing is swapping out that's the con swapping out another drive will require you to remove the case macbook pros 10 screws and it's still it, it's still pretty simple 10 screws get the cover off and then you got maybe two to four more screws in order to pull the drive out and prepare to swap it. So, I mean, you still got a, um, you still got, you still got a good advantage external. You just unplug and go, you just swap it out real quick. But, the con with external is the data transfer, the depending on what you use it, and especially ports. MacBook Pros, two USB ports. I still do not understand why two USB ports. So if you have like RAIN 12s or something that requires more than one, then you know. You have to use a hub or whatever. And sometimes the hubs may not work. So you lose a port unless you have this one and you use Firewire and free up that USB port that you could be using. So um, th that's my opinion. I prefer internal. I prefer the internal versus external. Um, the other advantage with external is that you can you can stack depending on the type of drive that you're using. You can stack like um, if I had more of these, I can chain link them all together with the firewire. Uh, also, is that you can you can update your drive. You can go and purchase. Uh, you could add plug in multiple drives. Of course, you're using up your USB power or whatever, so you may not want to do that. So uh, that's one of the that's one of the pros and the cons for using an external. But I mean, I have externals. I have my externals here, but I don't really use them because all my MacBooks have secondary drives in them that has the music on them. So I may use this for one or two clips or whatever in order to uh, get it on here um, when I'm using this drive. Okay, Eric said that he has two. Now these drives are good. And I'm going to mention this. Stay tuned at the end. Stay tuned at the end. I'm going to show you, you know, you can upgrade these drives. The drive that I have in here is not the original drive. You'd be surprised when I tell you what I have in here. 
So, and the, the, the case is not really on here. I just, I just uh, put it back together just to, just to have it for presentation when I did this video. So, uh, externals again, external versus internal. Uh, and um, let me see, external versus internal. One, and I think I had a, let me see, I think I had a, I didn't get a chance to look that up. I want to say I thought I found an image to use for this, and I didn't. I do have something else that I want to share, and I should have did it in the last video, and that is the, the read and write speeds. And I'm, I'm going to show this real quick, then I'm going to move on to the next. All right. Um, share it. Now, this is the read and write speeds for each of the each of the drives that I mentioned in the first section. Now, the of course, the fastest is at the top and it start from the bottom. Now, the the read and write speeds you open up full screen. With the standard mechanical, uh, sequential is about three quarters of a of a well, no, 170. Yeah, about around 170. And like I say, the uh, let's see, no, that's no, no, let me see. And we thought the read take longer because it has to search for it. But the the read is faster than the right. Uh, this is sequential, and then you got your random speeds for each of what the heads do. Now, like I said, you don't have heads in the remaining three, but this is like a this is like a tryout. This would be what you would do for your trials and. Like I said, with the classical hard drive is way slower. If you look at anything else, everything else sucks up. And of course, the, uh, the this is um, the next one is the standard SATA. Yep, this is the standard. And if you see this one, the standard uh, SSD is four times as fast or a whole lot fast than the standard mechanical. But then you have a, a, a faster or a newer generation SATA, which is the SATA 3, which is the Samsung series. You can see that it's faster. Yep, you can see that it's a lot faster, but let's go to the head with the um, the NVMe. The NVMe, it sucks up everything. I mean, really, 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 really fast. So this is just a chart that I want to point out to, to show the different speeds that are uh, You can't see that. Okay, let me see if I can zoom in. Uh, yeah, I think I can zoom in. All right. There we go. The uh, only thing is you just can't see, I just can't get, can I get it all? 
Uh, right there. I hope you're not watching. You're not watching this on your uh, phone, are you? You need to be on a computer. Yeah, I got older eyes. You see, I got glasses now. I don't wear them as much, but the screen that I'm looking at y'all on is about 10 feet away. So if you see, these are read and write speeds. Now, if you just look at the sequential for all of them, you see that um, the standard hard drive is getting sucked. I mean, the, the SATAs, the SSDs are about the same. Of course, you got different models. So this one is more of an upgrade or more faster because it's a newer generation. It's going to be a little bit more, but now you got you got this one that is supposedly a lot faster. That's a whole lot faster. Look at that. Look at them speeds. All right. Let's move on. All right. Because uh, still got three more, three more things to cover. And this is internal and external. And like I say, uh, internal is going to be faster than external. External can be replaced easier than internal. But internal, you never have to worry about carrying it. You, you never have to worry about carrying laptop plus external. But if your laptop gets stolen, then your internal is gone. So, I mean, there's balances on both ways and people may be on the fence both ways. It's all your preference and what you can do. So what, like my, my opinion is internal. I like internal because I customize it how I want it. So internal is, is where I go, but you choose what you want to do based on, um, based on your laptop and what it can do. And work, what works for you. So basically all my externals are backups. Backup. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what size this is. This is a backup. This is a backup, and I think this one is a one one terabyte. This is a one terabyte backup. It's full. And where I think I got another one. Uh, this one backup, but I would never take this one out, and I get into that a little bit a little bit later. So I mean, just right there, I got backups and. Not including this new one that I found, and of course, this this drive, this right here, this 500 gig drive is coming out. I'm gonna use it in another computer. I'm gonna change it out. Probably put a, a two or four a larger drive in there, and that's and you see how much I paid for. I only paid eleven dollars for it. Like I said, it came with everything. That one was a goodwill find. This one was a good year goodwill find. I think I paid 25 for this one. It was in the box with the original receipt. It had a 500 gig hard drive in it, which it doesn't anymore. And uh, if I can reach it. And this is my 
this is my main backup. This is what I use for Windows Time Machine and um and Mac. I mean Windows Windows backup and Time Machine. And it's another lacy. And it has Firewire, Firewire 800. It has Firewire, uh, I think that's that's 400. And it also has USB and eSATA. And how much did I pay for this one? Same price. But the original drive is, I don't, I think I pulled the original drive out because the thing is when you buy something, you don't know what to expect on the drive. Now, let me keep this over here. You don't know what to expect on the drive. You don't know whether the person that had it, if they got rid of it because uh, it was failing or whatever. And that one, one of them, which one? Uh, this one. This one actually had about 30 gigs of music on it. I was able to pull up their music from out of the iTunes. They didn't erase it off. They didn't clear it. So those are three different drives that I got a good deal on. All right, let's see what the comments are, which I'll come in about now. All right. Uh, suspected speed right now. What do you mean suspected? Uh, do a do a bench test. Do a benchmark test. Give me uh, when I get off, I'm, I need to find what the I did a benchmark test on this new computer when I did it. I think everything was good for a low grade. Um, OK, you. Oh, you was you was in Georgia. Savannah just left Savannah. Now in VA. OK, you're on the road. All right. So. That's it. Internal versus external. Like I said, my take is internal. A lot less you have to carry. Um, the speed is going to be faster. And that's usually the, the big thing, the speed. And uh, the, the downside is or the pro for the external is you can swap it out easy. And if anything happens to the laptop, you still got your backup, but then you still got your drive, but then that's why you have backups. So, and, and then also a lot of computers and laptops, you're not, you won't have this option to do large internals just like, uh, the ASUS I have, it it doesn't have an optical drive, so I can't put another drive in. It has a drive in it. I can update that drive, put a two, uh, I put a two terabyte drive in it, or whatever, make make it a little bit faster. But I'm, I'm cool with where it is. It has one terabyte, so that's good. All right, let's move on to, uh, and I don't remember what I was going to say about this one. Oh, upgrade facts. All right. Now, I guess this right now is. OK, now I do remember what I was going to say about this. one. All right. Hard grade, hard drive upgrade facts. Now, any drive that you have can be upgraded. This one terabyte um, Seagate can be upgraded. I can open this case up, and this one is one that doesn't have any screw. Yep, it has one screw. Has one screw under the label. I can feel it. I could take that screw off, pop the case, 
put a hard, put a solid state in or whatever, I can upgrade it. So fact is any, any external drive with the exception of some that are like hard cased where you can't uh, go into it, you can up, upgrade it. This one right here, this one can be upgraded. And actually, I think I started to open this one at one time. Uh, you probably can't see it, but there we go. And did I just break that? Yep, I snapped it. And this one has a regular. This one has a regular three and a half inch, three terabyte drive in it. Which this one is a few years old. It's real old. But uh, I can't remember. I think I do back music backup. This is like the the primary, the granddaddy backup for music. This is like the this is the largest drive that I have. So this drive is music. This drive is music, which is a backup or a main for a computer that doesn't have a, a internal drive in it. And this black one is a backup too. So I have two backups that can be used as secondary. And then I have the granddaddy backup that everything transfers over to this one too. So that's what I would say. Have have many that you can use, but also have lots of backups. And the thing with this one is I only plug this one up and turn it on whenever uh, needed. Oh, another thing about the internal versus external. And this is the, the downside to external. Bad cable bad or poor cables a lot of people have problems with accessing files and music playing and freezing and stuff because of the cables so when you have an internal you don't have that you don't have the issue or you won't have it as much so that's that's another thing about um internal versus external of course more stuff might come up, but that is a good point to have. All right. Now, like I said, all hard drives can be upgraded. I could take this drive out and I could put an eight terabyte in here. And most of them can be upgraded to really larger drives. They, there may be some that have limitations. The electronics may not have as much, uh, may not be able to allow you to to max it out, but you can upgrade um, your hard drive. Um, so that's what that's what I would do if you have a hard drive and you say, so for instance, if you have a hard drive that fails. And you find out that it's the actual hard drive, but the case and electronics still work. Just go out and buy another hard drive and put it in that case. And some people, what they do, they get rid of everything or they put it all to the side, not knowing that that case can be used to do as a transfer or as a backup or whatever. Um, the, mm, well, no, that doesn't apply, apply right now. So, all right, let me go on. That's just information, little information, uh, hard drive facts. Let's go into the next one. And this is one I tell people all the time. I even started out the video, the promo video with this because when I got, when I got this drive, this was the idea that I wanted to stress because I've seen people 
that take these drives. They use these drives at gigs. That is definitely a no no. Never, never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever, ever use a powered backup drive for a vent. These things are backup for a reason. I mean, yeah, you can use them as a main drive, but use it as what is intended, and that is a backup, a large scale backup. And the reason that I say that is because, and that's the issue that I have with this one. This one is a power drive. Now, the problem that I had with this, and I don't know why or how it happened, but the power supply on it failed. I mean, it it failed. I could not, I could not get it wor to work. Is sitting around here somewhere. Uh, in order for me, to, in order for me to use it again, I had to find something. I had to find another power supply that had the same or close to the same voltage in order for me to plug it in to power it up. And actually, that was like a, um, I think it was a power adapter from a bondage device. And that's that's what I had to use. I had to cut the tip off because the tip on the vonage would not work for for the drive. So that's one thing I would say. Do not use power drive because the thing is, you don't want to be at an event and the power supply, the AC ward, wall ward or whatever, it fails. It stops working. So that's why I said don't, don't, don't use these. Out of all the drives that you want to use, use your externals that don't require power. Hell, if you have one big enough, use a USB flash drive. I've done that. I've done a video where I've used a USB flash drive for the main hard drive. Check it out. It should be, it'll probably be floating right here when I get a chance to post it. The uh, emergency hard drive, EH, EHDD is what it's called. Video right here. Here's the link right here. So this drive and this drive. Now, here's the difference. This drive may have a lot more storage. You may have an external backup drive that you use for all your music, karaoke, and videos, music videos. Of course, the drive, this drive may have a lot more then this drive, and that's why you may use this for smaller events or you may not use it at all, but this drive is what you use. Now, like I said, if that if that power supply fails, you're out of luck. If the USB cable fails, you're out of luck. If the drive get damaged from moving around, you're out of luck. So why even bother? I wouldn't even bother with that. So uh, non-powered versus powered or powered versus non-powered is, is a bust. So that's why I tell people don't use don't use these large drives that require additional outlets or additional power. Use if you're gonna use if you're going to use external drive, use this. Use these that that have the uh, the ability for storage. I've actually tried um, a power before. I used to take this one whenever I go on trips. Of course, I didn't play music from it. I was using it to 
to back up and organize. So I, I don't really take this one out, especially now since the power supply has failed. And that's the last thing that you want is a power supply to fail because the adapters, the replacement power supply may not be as easy to find. You have to you have to come up with something to wear in order to get it get it to work. But that's easy as that. Powered versus non-powered. Stick with the power. Don't use the power if you don't have to. Or you can have problems that can be out of your reach and out of your hand control. So stay with power. Or no, stay with non-power. Excuse me. Stay with non-power. Don't go, don't go with the power. Because like I said, if you if you have the problem, it's gonna find you. And you you yeah, you don't want that problem. What's up, Steven? What's going on? All right, now let's see what you say here, Eric. Uh, lap, laptop should go. Your laptop should go down to on a power outage. No, what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about power outage, as for the the actual adapter, the on the external drive. You know, these drives right here have their own power source. You have like a you have like a, a, a power supply for it. So the thing is, if that fails, just like with this one, this one stopped working. I don't know for what reason, because I only use this one as a backup. I don't even keep it plugged on as much. I probably I probably use this one more than I use this one. I've had this one for maybe about 10 years or so now. I know at least over five, I had it before we moved here. So yeah, I had this one for a long time. So, and, and oh yeah, th and that's another thing too. Say, the event, say in the event that uh, you're doing a gig and somebody walks by and Say if they see an open outlet in in your power strip, and they want to um, yep, that's what I was saying. With 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 this one, you can pop it open and put in a new drive. That was uh, you yes, yeah, so you you forgot that that one was. I mentioned that one in right here in this section hard drive upgrade fact. So you missed that one. Um, I'm in the next one after that, comparing power versus pow power versus non-power. And say if you if if you got a power strip and somebody sees an open and this this can't happen and somebody sees an open to to plug their phone to charge in. But your uh your power supply for your external drive is blocking it. And so they unplug that and move it into the other slot. What's going to happen? Your music is going to stop because the power to the hard drive is stopped. So having, having uh, a power drive can lead to more issues than what you think. So I just say stick stick to and where's the other one now this one stick to your non-powered or self-powered these are self-powered i mean they can they will all have cable issues they can all have cable issues like uh if you're using cables that don't have the rf chokes on them to Eliminate the RF frequencies. You could have that problem. Uh, the thing that you can do, just get cables, and that's what I need to. And that one, that's what I'm going to share as well. All right, I'm gonna mention this real quick, but I'm gonna post it as well. These are the cables, USB cables that you should be using. 
And if you can see what the difference is, and this one, this one is a cable that I use for a controller. I used it for uh, NS7, but I'm probably going to use it here now since I'm not using the NS7. And the reason why is these little black things right here. And most of them, some of them may not have two, one on each end, but if you got them on, on both ends, that's a good cable to have. And what that does, it the the uh, the frequencies from the power from the power cable, if it's close by from anything that produces the RF frequency, it it filters it from interfering in it. Inter interfering. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Could be the case that has issues and the drive is fine. Yeah, and that can that can be a problem too. You could have a case, the electronics that's that's going bad. And like I said, with this one, with this one, this is my this is my granddaddy drive. This is the the backup backup drives for all music. This one is the the last line of backups these two are usable backups mostly all my computers except for um, i haven't put any on this computer that i'm on right now the desktop and um the the asus windows laptop i don't have any music on that so this is what i may use these drives for but all my Macs, the, the out of two out of the three Macs that I use, they have internal drives. So I use internal drives instead of these. And the internal drives are, are probably, I think the internal drives are larger than these. So these are my two backups that I can take out. This is the backup that stays at home. But for some reason, the power supply went out on it, and I don't keep it. I don't keep it plugged up like that. When I plugged it in to get ready to use it, it was dead. I um, put a meter to it, and it didn't have no voltage, so the electronics inside of it has gone out. And I found something to use to to power it up. So um, we back in action now. All right, can you? Can you put a non-power drive into power? Oh yeah, sure. So, um, the thing is, when you're, if you're doing, all right, let's see. Here, here's the thing: a non-power drive is going to be this size, or it's going to be this because the drive that's originally in this case requires two types of voltage it requires a 5 volt and a 12 volt in most cases so you will have to have if anything it'll be a 12 volt so if anything you have to have power for anything this size or i really want to pick this drive up and move it but i got it plugged in this is the this is the new drive this is the one that was in the box it still has the the plastic on it and everything so this drive has a 500 gig that that that's coming out that's definitely coming out i'll take that 500 gig and put it in this desktop and this is actually a desktop size hard drive but you can put you can put an ssd you can put an ssd you can put everything except for the nvme inside of here well you can do that if you use the adapter but here's the thing i wouldn't do that because it's not going to run it's not going to go any faster 
The only thing you're going to be doing, you're going to be going backwards. That drive right there has a uh, Firewire 400, eSATA, USB. No, nope. yep. The fastest speed is probably eSATA. ESATA, I can't remember exactly what ESATA is, but the Firewire is a 400, which is less than, slightly less than the USB. The USB is uh, four, 480 megabits. So your question, can you put a non-powered? Yeah. And what you're doing, you, you're doing the... Um, you you putting in a raw driver or a raw hard drive. But the best thing to do is to replace it with the same size drive. So, all right, here we go. This is another case. This is a custom built case. And I want to pull this out. This is a this is a 2 terabyte and this is an enterprise drive. This is one that came out of a NOS. I no longer own it. Christian owned it because he damaged one of them and I made him pay for it. And so I threw in the other one. I'm like, okay, I, I need a pair. So here, yeah, you can have this one. So this was his, I got to put it in his computer. So this is a two terabyte. I can take and this is, I don't know why I would want to do this, but let's say if this one was a 500, I can take this two terabyte, pull this 500 out of here and put that one in here. <coughs> <coughs> but most likely I would do that with this one, which is the drive that I'm holding. I'm holding up the box because I don't want to pick it up. But you see that this one has a 500 gigabyte. This one is a 200. I pull this drive out and now it's a two terabyte free agent pro. When I add this one in. So yeah, you can do that. It's not, it's really not that hard. Yeah, the connections with uh, Steven said, yep. Yeah, the uh the connections are the same as long as you don't have that nvme and really you can do that too if you swap out the and let me see if i can go back to if you have if you have this right here And I've never seen this adapter before. I'm sure I, I wouldn't be surprised that they do make it. But with this adapter right here, this is a e, this is a uh, not e SATA, but this is a a, a SATA, like a um, a regular SSD or even a mechanical, but more like an SSD. You make these these drives into a SSD slot. Now, as for whether it whether it um, it downgrades the speed, I'm not for sure because you're using you're using cables. You're using a um, using a SATA three, and this is a whole different this is a whole different league right here. But you can do that if you wanted to. And that's powered versus non-powered. All right, now coming to the last one, get ready to wrap it up. And this is, I think this is one that a lot of people want to see, building a custom case. Now to build a custom case, oh great. Yep, I just knocked the hard drive over, so 
Uh, I may be paying for another drive. And that was probably a 16 inch drop. Had it sitting on top of a something on the floor. This one. If I plug it in and it starts clicking, it's gone. But anyway, building a custom case, external case, is really easy. And what you're going to spend, and the, the, the example that I use is that instead of buying this drive, Instead of buying this drive, you could buy a case and it's not the same one. It's two different ones. It's not even closely the same because this one, this one is more rounded. But anyway, you can buy a case and this one is a case that I bought. And this is kind of the, the same question that um, that that you were asking. You can replace you can replace a drive in uh, a bolt. Like I said, you can replace a drive in this one. You can replace a drive in this one. Or you can replace this drive, this 500 drive, one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte, eight terabyte, even 12 terabytes if it can handle it. That's the thing is knowing what your limits or what the limit is for the electronics and if they can handle it. But yeah, it this would be the cheapest route because the thing is when you're buying the drives like this, you're buying the brand name and the electronics as well as the drive. You can go out and buy an external case and it's easy to put in it. That's it. It's already out. You can buy external cases for about around $15. If you just want something basic, you can buy more elaborate ones. But the thing is, is what's inside of it. You buy, um, you can buy a larger hard drive. So for the price of this, and this is the one terabyte, I can buy a case and a two terabyte drive. This is not a two terabyte drive, but I'm using it for example. So I can say for the price of this case and this two terabyte fire cooler, which is a SSHD or a hybrid. Now, this drive is faster than this drive, but costs a lot less. So that's another thing to think about. And, and let's say I didn't even want to use a hybrid. If I wanted to be light and quiet, I could put an SSD in it. It's no more than sliding it in. That's it. It's in there. Then put the cover on it. And I got a lot of stuff right here. Put the cover on it. Snap it in place. Boom. Ready to go. Put it in my pocket. Put it in my bag or whatever. And in the event that this drive fails, something happened to the drive, pop the cover off, run to the store, get another drive, swap that one out too. This one will be a little bit harder to get open. This one has no screws. And the only thing it has, it has a power LED on the back for connection to show connectivity and it has the the uh, micro usb i think it's usb 3.0 
and this is a horn attack. Uh, which store did I get this from? Either I got it from Fry's or I got it from Microsoft. I got it from one of them. Now you can also, and let's move up. Let's say that you want a you want a a, a larger uh, backup at home, or let's just say you're the type of person you prefer to have powered um, hard drives whenever you're playing. You could do the same thing for that too, and that's what this case is. This is actually a case. The electronics in these things are real small and you can't see it because it's green. The chroma key is has taken it away. But as a USB USB 3.0 port power switch and the power port. And that's all you need. So I want to take this two terabyte and make it into external. Get it in there. Now with these drives, you want to do a little bit more. Slide it in the slot and see there is locked in. But what you want to do after that, you have screw holes on the side. You want to screw the screws in to lock it in place on both sides and then you're done it won't fall like right now it'll fall out because uh i don't have um i don't have it screwed in so then you would screw it and this right here is the cover for it so then i slide the cover over it And then we're here, there's a back cover that goes over here and then two screws to lock it down. So you have six screws to deal with. And this case was uh, $15. But I think it was originally, I got it on sale. So it was $15, but I think it was originally about 20 something. And I don't have this on there, right? So, gotta be careful with it. But now, also, now you can do this and I'm gonna look into doing this soon too, just so I can have one of those. Now, if you want, if you want really small, if you want an external drive that's smaller than this, you can go with the NVMe method. And let me pull it up. I had a diagram. And this is this is just one that I saw. I'm sure I could probably find a better one. But you can go with this right here. And what that is, that is that has a Samsung NVMe chip inside of it. And it has a heat sink is powered by Thunderbolt. Uh, I think it's what Thunderbolt three. I'm not for sure what the new Macs are right now. Thunderbolt, or I've actually seen some that are USB C, but I didn't realize USB C had enough power. I mean, not USB C, but USB 3.0. But Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt three and USB C are the same thing. Just Apple prefer to name this stuff differently than the rest of the world. 
But that is like real small. I mean, small enough you can put it in your pocket. There's uh, there's no noise and possibly, probably no heat either. So when you get to the point that uh, you need to pull it out, you just reach into your pocket or your bag or whatever, pull it out, take your USB-C Thunderbolt cable and plug it in. Now you have to have that port. You have to have that technology. You have to have uh, a newer Mac or uh, a newer laptop to where you can put that in. So that is about it. This one, this one is probably the fastest external hard drive that you can build. But these, this is costly. Of course, it's newer technology. It's going to cost. The case alone, um, I looked it up when I was in Micro Center, and the cases were about fifty to sixty dollars just for the little small case to plug it into. As for the actual give me as for the actual case, you're gonna end up spending sixty, fifty, sixty dollars. Uh probably get cheaper on Amazon or um yeah you get it cheaper on Amazon or maybe uh, New Egg or someplace like that, someplace that carries um, specific parts or whatever. But uh, the 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 drive is going to be where it's going to hurt you. If you were to do something like this, you would want the the largest drive possible. You would want something that's fast. Um, I don't know, but anyway, your computer has to have the USB-C and um, I don't know. I, I would need to see if USB 3.0 is an option that you can connect this to. I saw some videos recently with somebody doing that. And that is about it. Like I said, that is the that is the fastest. This is the fastest that you would be able to get for external drive. Now, there are others that are smaller. And let me look that up. It is a, a Samsung. It's one that people have been talking about recently. And I'm not sure what type of drive is inside of these. And let me, I got it pulled up here. Now with these, I don't know. This may be all where you don't, where you don't have, um, you don't have parts to, you don't have parts to transfer. So you wouldn't be able to, oh, don't need to do that. Yep, uh, there it is right there. Let me take this banner off. Pop. 
pocket file. Now I wonder what's the largest size that you can get. And somebody was just talking about this one. Let's see, what was the question? Do you do lightning also? You mean lightning like as in Apple, the lightning? I haven't seen any hard drives that uses uh, lightning technology, if that's what you're talking about. Now you're talking about drives that uh, that you can buy that can plug into your phone. Now let me show you. I do have I do have um, a drive. I do have a few, but I can grab this one. This drive I'm about to show you right now. I can uh, back up my iPhone and my iPad. Oh, you mean you mean Glad that's a flash drive and not a hard drive. Talking about something like um, this one is a four way USB. Then I can flip it down and micro if I want to uh, back up from a an Android phone, especially if it's Android that has um, a micro USB, an older one, flip it back up. Still got USB. Now, if I flip the drive completely, then I have a lightning on the end. And then I can... Um, plug it into, plug it directly into my phone. And see it ask, it ask. And there it is, I get the software. And it pops up. And I have everything backed up. Oh, lights, lightning. I thought you meant lightning. Uh, do, do, lightning. Oh, you mean um, lightning is for questions. Eh, I do a little bit. I mean, I haven't, I haven't did a lot of uh, like DMX stuff in a while. But I mean, I could do it. I did, uh, if you've seen the, the post that I posted a few weeks ago with the, uh, with the, yes. nope, I, I don't know where the Best Buy have these. I, I got it from Amazon. I'm going to, um, let me do this right now. I'm going to invite you to a group. Matter of fact, if y'all all, all want to be invited, I can all send you an invite. There's a um, and that's what I that's what I need to do. I need to open up my my Amazon um, oh, shoot, what is it called? Affiliate affiliate program or whatever. I had it, but I keep there's one part that I keep forgetting to to complete. 
And so they ended up shutting it down. But there is a Facebook group. Nothing but Amazon promo codes. And the promo codes are like deep, like um, 50, 40, 30 percent, all the way up to like 80, 90 percent. And I mean, it's just like various stuff. I had the I had the account uh, for a while where I was able to do the same. And then I lost it because uh, I didn't I didn't end up completing something at a specific time. So I ended up losing it, but I'm going to try it back again because it can be a profitable way to make a little extra money or whatever. But these ladies, they doing it big. They they doing it. They got it deep. I think now they trying to move to to 10,000 members or 5,000 members or something like that. But when I first got in, I was kind of hooked on it. I was buying stuff left and right. And these drives and i think they were under twenty dollars but yep you could back up your you could back up your um uh, i don't have no music on here and only got a few videos this one is a news video might not be able to hear it i can't hear it but yeah it's a three-way and it also came with i don't have the one it comes with a usb c adapter uh usb usb 3.0 to usb c so i can use it with with uh, other laptops and computers, as well as um, as well as newer Android phones, so you can use it with just about any any device. And actually, this one is uh, what is this? I think this is two fifty six. Let me plug it in. I'm trying to. Remember. I think it's one. It's one twenty eight. Yes, yeah, one twenty-eight, and you could use it between Mac and Mac and PC. But uh, other than that, guys, I am I'm done. Ready to wrap up. Two hours and 40 minutes and then I got to go through and do markers so other than that I am done and I'm about to wrap up because I am tired and I didn't even finish all my water today today was a workout day not really sore just tired didn't get that much sleep so want to go ahead and turn in at night um that drive that i was looking at this one let me go back to it okay this one has an nvm nvme nv non-volatile memory express that's what the e means i couldn't remember what the e means And I think this case, and see the thing with um, anything that's SSD or or better, it has a higher shock value to where when you drop it, it won't be subjectable to so much damage.
and see, okay, this one, this one is dissected. This is a dissect. So this one, you can't, you can't swap this one out. This is all like proprietary. All right, let me. All right, I'm sending y'all a uh, invite right now to that group. All right, Colton. I just sent you an invite. Eric. All right, Stephen. I mean, you can. You can find some good deals in this group. Dang, they're 143,000 members. Oh my goodness. Dang, I know they're making some good money. All right, well, guys, uh, Y'all got any other questions? I am about to wrap up so I can try to do a little editing. Anybody that wants to watch this video, uh, they can come back and watch it. Add in some markers. Go back and check some of the other previous videos. and You see that I have markers, time markers on them to where you can jump to specific, specific points directly on them but uh i'm about to sign out thank y'all for checking out atlanta dj zone tech tuesday live for joining me the kid aka kenya ellis i will catch y'all next week hopefully with another good topic something that's going to come up and of course you guys know before the end of this week as i say always Somebody is going to mention something and I'm going to have to send them the link to this video so they can find the answer. So anyway, thank y'all for checking out. Um, well, anyway, thank you for checking out. If you're catching it on the replay, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Ring that bell notification so you can receive future videos that I will be adding that were done on Facebook before I started YouTube. But anyway, I will catch y'all later. I am out. Y'all have a good day. Peace.